In this video, I'll give you an overview of the Forms and Tables basic design system. So, link is in the description. It's in the Figma community. When you click Open in Figma, you'll have access to the design system. You'll see what I see here. And then in future projects, future files, you can go to your assets and go in your library, search for Forms and Tables and you can add it. And once you do that, you'll have access to all of the components. So for instance, if you need an avatar, you can drag that out and you can customize it how you see fit. So I'm gonna go through each one of the component pages and then I'll highlight some of the things that you should know about the design system. And then in future videos, we'll go in depth building out UI with the different components. So here we have the button components, we have badges, we have navigation, tab navigation, horizontal, vertical. We have forms, so different inputs, uh, sliders, selection groups, upload, pretty much everything you can think of. I really wanna set a great foundation for a UI system for people to be able to customize and build on top of. We have drop downs. we have tables. So with tables, I typically build things from a cell uh, to provide much more customization capabilities. I have also built out basic templates for tables, um, which should be responsive. We have lists. We have pagination. We have data display, so like a card UI with different charts that you can go ahead and customize. We have data visualization for charts. So we have the uh, candlesticks, we have bar charts, we have area charts, we have line charts, scatter plot, we have the donut chart, we have pie charts, we have the radar chart. Um, so customizing them, you can drag out an instance, you can customize the size. I have typically included small, medium, and large for all the components. Some components have extra small, extra, extra small, and some have extra large uh, when it makes sense to do so. Um, and then you can customize the type here. There's a bar chart, line chart, and then you can customize the, the labels. So here's the right Y label. Um, also, Sometimes people include the text to be edited in the properties panel. I think it's just better to just be able to click and edit it directly. So I did not include that. Uh, so something to note there. We have progress. We have the alerts for banner, dialogue, and toasts. We have the accordions. Um, another thing to note is with certain components I have built out um, basic interactions with the prototyping feature in Figma. So for instance, you can expand and collapse for the accordion. We have cards. Um, one thing to note with cards, also with the, the, the cell component for tables and the data display component and various other components, I've included a add component feature. So with that, you can build your own component and then you can add it within this component, uh, which makes it very powerful. So for instance, if I just get rid of everything, you're starting brand new, uh, you can build out whatever you see fit and then you can swap it out for this replace with component. So for instance, if I go here and let's say I want a command menu for whatever reason, I can go ahead and add that. Now it's added into the card component. We have the command menu, we have modals. Um, so here with modals, another thing to note, as I build out the design system, I'm including templates. So here are some of the different templates here. We have uh, the modal template. And with this built off of the replace with component, I built these much more complex UIs for modals. We have tooltips. We have loaders, so here to see what this looks like, I'm just gonna click on the, the preview prototype. I'm gonna hide the UI, and now you see we have a skeleton loader. Um, we have different loaders here, the bar, 
dot and spinner lo loaders. So let's see what that looks like. It's pretty powerful what Figma can do with its prototyping capabilities. Then we have icons. I'm using hero icons. I'll probably be adding my own custom icon library. We have social icons. Um, we have avatars. I'm using unsplash photos for the actual photos of people. So here's the photo version. Here's the initials. Uh, again, to, to change the text, you can just click in and change it to whatever you see fit. Uh, here's a situation where I have XL as well as extra small. Um, here's large, you can add the indicator, uh, and then we have the icon, and you can click in in this case and change the icon if necessary. So with the photos, so going to the photo, we're using these unsplash photos, like I said, to customize the photo, just like you can add a fill color. So this is uh, like a light yellow. There's also, you can create styles for photos. So here are the different um, people and feel free to add as many um, photos from Unsplash. They're a really great um, resource. And then we have miscellaneous. So this is where we have the, the text styles. Um, I included a tabular type style for numbers, particularly in the table. Uh, they're much easier to parse uh, because they're, it's mono space. So numbers, you can, you can scan much easier in a, in a table uh, UI. Um, we have all the different colors. I kept this as utilitarian as possible. We have black to white to grayscale, and then we have blue, green, red, and yellow. Um, feel free to add as many colors on top of this as you see fit. Customize it for your brand. Um, and then we have different shadows. So these are the drop shadows. We have some basic gradients. Uh, and then we have a few other miscellaneous things like the replace with component component. Um, so that is really it. Again, I, I try to build from the individual component level, but I also include templates. So for instance, here's a basic table. So this is a responsive table that you can go ahead and uh, customize uh, to add things, take away things. So for instance, with tables, I'll start from the most elemental level, which is the table cell, and I'll drag that out and then I'll duplicate it and let's create a column here. So we have a column. I'm gonna put this into auto layout with shift A and then we're gonna drag out a few more columns. Just duplicate that. And then I'm going to wrap this in an auto layout. Just gonna make sure everything is filling container. And now you have a very basic table um, built from the most individual level. So another thing to note with forms, you can use the input here and you can make this a selector uh, by just adjusting a few properties so we can make this say select so a lot of these components there's a lot built into it and uh, the more you play around with it the more you'll realize all the different things that you could create we could go ahead and and make a search so i am going to add the placeholder get rid of the input get rid of this icon and we're going to add the uh, left icon and then we're going to uh, change that so this is the nested in instance and we're going to go to magnifying glass and then I'm just going to make a few other changes we're going to get rid of the border and we're going to change this to off-white and then we're going to make the border radius totally rounded so then if you had like a white background let's say you're building a mobile interface you could see how this could come together or for like a dashboard all of a sudden you took a input and you uh, turned it into a search component um, again i will be adding templates as we go along so here with the tables i have these three templates so this is uh, more advanced components that i have built out for this so everything from like almost like excel sheets we have a financial statement we have the ability to input hours um, i will be adding and it's in this uh, in a frame with the light blue background um, so i encourage you to go to the website as well and sign up uh, with your email to get updates uh, it's forumsandtables.com link in the description um, and also i write a lot on medium 
So you can give me a follow on Medium. I write about components kind of as I'm building them, and um, it, it should be a helpful guide. So I hope that's a helpful overview. And in the next video, we are going to do a deep dive on buttons, and we're going to build out some basic UI uh, focused around the button component and all the different variables um, that we can do here in the properties panel.